So is Character Creator 4 and iClone 8 still worth it? Yes, it is. Let's go through it. Now, this is obviously one of the demo scenes where the character's already been pre-made. Um, but let's kind of go through and we'll start from scratch creating a character. Now, I've been using this for quite some time, so I do have some packs that I've purchased and some that I don't, so I don't actually remember what's in the default. Um, but we do have a list of characters here, like I'm just going to pick this guy and uh, just going to quickly put some clothes on him. But from here, what we can actually do is let me just move that over. The more the biggest feature around Character Creator 4 is how much control we have over changing the character, the modifiers, I guess. So I know that um, the actor, the head and the body are there by default. Headshot is obviously part of the headshot solution where you can take a photo of yourself and kind of build yourself into a 3D character. We'll probably cover that in a future video, but I do have far past videos about it. So from here, we can select our full body, come down here, we can start changing kind of like the sliders around, da -da 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 -da, so on and so forth. Obviously we can go to extreme, so it's best to have everything at kind of like 100% on the sliders on the right. So if I were to click reset, you'll see that it goes to some skinny little feature. And then from here, we can kind of start expanding a little bit by a little bit. Uh, body tone, why not? Have some more tone buddy and body builder. And then it's kind of like all working with the sliders. Yeah, one tip though is never have something over 100% or you're going to start getting some weird effects. Obviously, the head's a little bit weird. So if we reset the head to a default, then come in, we can go, you know, like a heavy face, head scale, make it a little bit bigger. Let's give it a bit of a round face and let's come to the top, something base male. There we go, something like that. And then we can even go in further and do all, you know, like ears. You know, we change the height of the ears and nose and jaw and, you know, you can go to town on this. I like this. Now, there are options as well, even to go down the tune route. If we, for instance, come down into hair, 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 over here, hairstyles. So I know this is one of the packs that I've purchased. Now, obviously, this one here, um, this is kind of like the realistic hair. So it's not really going to fit too well on this character, but we will throw it on there for now. <laughs> let's, let's jump back to a normal character there we go look at you buddy ready for a night on the town so i've got the option to go through and apply makeup as well mate do you want to be a warrior be a warrior and then from here we've got options where we can go straight into substance painter we can go into nvidia omniverse we can go into unreal engine you can even go into scummy unity but more importantly you can go into blender so if we even come up to here, file, export, are you wearing clothes? Yep, sweet. <laughs> file, export, uh, as an FBX, all. From here, we can go into Blender at the top, or my change to Blender. Embedded textures, I normally untick that. I like to have my textures separately. Mesh and motion, I just want the mesh to make sure he's in the right pose. Let's use a subdivided mesh. Merge beard and brows into one object. Because, for instance, kind of like the mo's one object, the beard's one option. Like there might be a tuft of hair here, the top of their hair, and all that kind of stuff. There's a whole bunch of um, kind of like separate objects. Merge them into one. No worries. And then from here, let's just go into an export. Yes, please. Let's go. Face paint, man. Let it export. And then we'll jump over into Blender in a sec. Clone as well, which we'll touch on another video. We do have the character created pipeline where we can start importing characters. So if we import our character that we just created, Face Paint Man, there he is. As we can see, if we rigging in and select the mesh, we come over into rigging and animation. We can use Rigify and we can just click Rigify. And there we have it now. The character is fully rigged, has all its controls. So with the armature pose mode, you know, do all this jazz. Da -da 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 -da. What's that? FK, IK, I don't know which one it is. And then over here in the item, we've got all our layers that we can turn off. And so pretty much using Rigify, it's exactly been parented to this character, which makes life a lot stinking easy and animation go nuts. The other thing as well is all the um, animation, oh, sorry. The other thing as well is all the textures are all set up in this as well, um, using this pipeline here. So you can see it looks pretty good. That hair, let's just fix that up. 
just had to come into the render settings and increase transparency from eight to, I don't know, 24. I'm just gonna make up a number and their hair looks amazing. And so like that, we've got a character straight into Blender. Do your animation stuff. Now you're probably asking, why not just use MetaHumans? MetaHumans need to stay within Unreal Engine. So if you're doing a project that's outside of Unreal Engine, you can't use it. Just an FYI. So yeah, check it out, link in the description. We'll do another video on iClone. There's a few cool features in there, including Motion Director, which I'm gonna to start touching very soon. Um, and then we'll do a workflow going from Character Creator, iClone to Unreal, Character Creator, iClone to Omniverse. You've just seen the Blender version. Like and subscribe.